January 4th, 1931. W. Dyer. My name is William Dyer, and I'm a professor of geology at the Miskatonic University, Massachusetts. Our mission in the Antarctic is to conduct several geological surveys and, soil properties permitting, archaeological digs on parts of the continent that haven't been explored by previous expeditions. After several gruelling weeks at sea aboard the Arkham, we have finally reached our destination. Following the unloading of the expedition's cargo, the ship is to make the return trip to bring further supplies. Aside from the usual reports on our surveys, I will keep a diary and instruct several key members of the team to do the same. Antarctica is, for all intents and purposes, a new scientific frontier, and I want to preserve even the minutest of details for posterity in case our expedition fails under unforeseen circumstances. January the 10th, 1931. W. Dyer. We erected a rudimentary shack for the team with the supplies we brought. It should prove a better shelter than the number of tents we had to spend the last six nights in if we intend to stay for as long as we have planned, which is several weeks. The Arkham is scheduled to return in 14 days with supplies. January the 12th, 1931. W. Dyer. While we studied what lies within the cave, Mr. Gedney was able to erect the drilling apparatus and promptly excavated several fossils, mostly things like seaweeds and trilobites. These discoveries align with the strata they were found in, but they are, of course, exciting nonetheless. What is remarkable, though, is an enormous fossil that Mr. Gedney was able to unearth. It seems to be the imprint of a gigantic, hitherto unknown species of five-sided starfish. January the 11th, 1931, W. Dyer. After successfully establishing a base camp and setting up a basic hut, my research assistant Danforth and I have set out to inspect this conspicuous cave entrance, then marched on. What we found inside must be seen to be believed. A construct of some kind, then an entrance leading further into the darkness, all built in stone. It must have been built by an ancient people thousands of years ago. I have yet to find an answer to the question of how they possibly could have arrived, let alone how they sustained themselves in Antarctica. How were humans of yore able to stay alive in such a hostile environment, not to mention to erect such an imposing structure? January the 13th, 1931. W. Dyer. After examining the structure further, we surmised that it must be far more ancient than we initially believed. The open entrance features what appears to be a door-like mechanism, but there does not seem to be any obvious way of operating. There is a five-sided hole at the center of the platform, about 10 inches wide, which suggests that something is missing, an object which can be inserted into it. 
January the 16th, 1931. W. Dyer. We've found a strange object embedded in the ice, not far from the entrance. It's a five-sided cylinder, primarily made of stone with a star-shaped top. It has metal trimmings, a gemstone embedded in its top side, and its five sides are marked with strange symbols. This newly discovered object fits the hole of the pedestal in front of the door perfectly, but inserting it doesn't seem to have any effect. I can only speculate, but I assume it functions like a key to open the door should it close. January 17th, 1931, W. Dyer. After much consideration, Danforth and I finally made the perilous climb across the chasm. Our colleagues in Massachusetts would probably call us reckless or mad for even attempting such a thing in such a remote location, so far from help. But this entire structure is just too magnificent not to be explored further. Danforth and I finally admitted to each other what we individually already had in our minds. This structure is likely not of human origin. I must admit that I have, in fact, read the Necronomicon, this peculiar piece of literature by the mad Arab Abdul al Hazred. Up until this expedition, I thought it to be nothing more than the deranged musings of a madman with no further significance. Upon inspecting this new mural, and the first one we discovered, these texts don't seem very mad after all. The Necronomicon tells of creatures whose description is eerily similar 
to the ones depicted so far. Elder things, it calls them. And if the Necronomicon is to be believed further, these elder things are not merely observers of life on Earth, but its very origin. I cannot express how much this realization now weighs on Danforth and me, but we will have to keep quiet lest we put the morale of the team and therefore the success of this expedition in jeopardy. The mural at hand and the corresponding passages of the Necronomicon tells of the arrival of this ancient species when Earth was but a barren rock. They seem to be able to traverse the vastness of space using their wings. After their planet of origin was somehow destroyed or faced some other kind of calamity that must have made it uninhabitable. Thank you. 